a member of the University Gala Committee. And this all connects back to what we're talking about with alumni today, which is the only reason I'm running off these credentials. And I most recently been accepted as an advancement fellow for this academic year, working with the entire advancement team in that office as a faculty fellow. So I just lay that groundwork for you to know what my connection and where my head and heart is when it comes to Stockton, the Office of Alumni Relations and um, the Office of Advancement. So that's my intro. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Perot Crowley, Director of Alumni Relations. Um, it's great to see so many people here on Zoom. Donna mentioned I just had my 21 year anniversary as well. Can't imagine working any place else but here. Um, and Donna, she mentioned her credentials and the way that we already work together. But what it, one thing that is so great about that is the way all this kind of came about really was organically. Like you were the person that our office would reach out to for a number of faculty initiatives. And then as we formalized processes and became more strategic in our office, we started, you know, putting in places where you can really make a positive impact. And it's not, it's not just on there, you know, many, many faculty that we work with on a number of different initiatives. So we're happy to share um, more about them with you today. So just as a big, thank you. Yeah, you are. Awesome. So just as a basic overview, uh, we have really eight overarching points about why it's important to cultivate a strong alumni base. Can we just quickly go around the room and on Zoom, we're just gonna take a pulse on just who's here so we kind of know who we're, who we're talking to. Donna, can we start with you? Yes, I'm Donna Howard from School Business. Um, I do uh, student internships, um, which is a very, very important point for um, alumni to uh, stay involved and stay connected. Hi, Lindsay Benedges, who's the director of event services. I handle our commencement ceremonies and um, campus rentals. Oh, I'm Gina Arroyo. I am the event coordinator in event services and campus center operations, and I schedule all for student affairs, athletics, and admissions. Awesome. And I'm Erin T. McKenna. I'm also an events coordinator in event services, and I'm with a special bond with Hospitality Management Tourism Program. We also host as an uh, intern for the semester and student schedulers. We train them the event schedulers in um, the field of higher ed. We got a student in the back. Thank you, Emmanuel. Dana? Uh, Dana DePuri, Assistant Director for Education Development. I work with School of Business and Arts and Humanities School to support career exploration and professional development for students. I'm Doug Dean. Uh, I work with uh, the social work program and I work with the undergraduate uh, I am a coordinator of undergraduate practice. Hi, I'm Betsy Furbaugh and I'm in sociology, anthropology, and I'm also related to faculty with women's gender sexuality studies, American Studies Master's Program, and the new Human Development Program in School of Education. Oh, okay, that's easy. Hello, everybody. My name is Aisha Lee. I'm in alumni relations as well. I work there with Sarah, and I'm celebrating my 10 year anniversary. Um, yeah. Thank and you. And I'm all but alumni. Yeah. Awesome. Hi, I'm Tara Luke. I'm a biology faculty member. Um, and I've been here for 20. Yes, we would have some. Hi, I'm Cynthia King. I teach in the literature program uh, in Murphy, and I co direct the Murphy Writing Center with Marie DiGiorgio. And I've been here for 15 years. It's great. Hey, online, who wants to start, Tara? Can you, read? Can you see who's there? I can. All right. I can start. I'm Preeti Haria from School of Education and um, co-chair of a minor disability studies minor. I've been at Stockton since 13 years now. Thanks, Preeti. I, I'll go next. I'm Sequita Sweet. I'm the chair of the EDD and organizational leadership program. And um, I saw this topic and was excited because uh, uh, one of our um, goals is to increase is to understand and increase the um, the impact that uh, our alum uh, we're in our tenth year so in, that our alum can um, you know have an impact on our program and um, and and give back uh, in in multiple ways so I'm excited to be here uh, to hear this presentation. Great, we're here for you for sure. 
for South Carolina. Hi, I'm Barbara Tulelli from the Educational Opportunity Fund Program. Um, I've been here for more years than I'd like to say, but um, I, I work primarily with the uh, third year, fourth year, fifth year students. So um, a lot of alumni have come and gone through our doors years. And Kelly. Hi, good morning. I, um, I work in the... Um, School of Health Science in the Master of Communication Disorders program. Um, I am the chair of our alumni council. I um, was an undergrad and graduate um, student at Stockton. And um, I do find that this topic is of huge interest. So I'm excited to hear the presentation. Thank you so much. Kelly in our orbit? I know. Kelly, not in our orbit. All right. Kelly, what's your last name? Maslanic. Thank you. Thank you. She is in our over now. Yeah. Thank you. So that's helpful. Um, that's very helpful for us. So, so we're going to move through about eight quick points and then leave it open for a discussion. But you know, Stockton is alphabet soup. And so when we start throwing around some of these acronyms, if, if you're unclear about what they are, just give us a shout out and like, just raise your hand and, and we'll try to clarify that. Um, it just helped with the slides and helped with us um, yeah, to coordinate some of the information. So the first and obvious low-hanging fruit of why most alumni feel like the university is trying to engage them is always to pick their pocket, right? Now, all you want is money. I just spent four years here. I just went to grad school. I mean, I, I even paid off my loans. Um, stop asking me for money, right? So, uh, but so, so we put this slide first because let's just get this out of the way. It, it, we know that a, we know that a strong financial base and strong financial support is important. So we're going to talk about it first, but it is not the most important and 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 the other seven things really probably get to this so i could have left it last but i feel like we we should have maybe got it out of the way first so we, we make no bones about the um about the ask about asking a donate uh, alumni to get and i think if you want to talk a little bit about the the value of that and the importance of that. And we can talk about a bunch of different ways to give as well that some of you may or may not be familiar with sure so, so um Donations are important. We, we've we actually gotten better at our messaging, which isn't, we need major gifts from all of our alumni. We're a young school and it's not a reasonable request, but we do ask for participation. So, I mean, fun facts, last year we had 1,603 alumni who made donations to Stockton. The year before that, we had 928. So that's a big difference and we're really proud of it. Um, and our messaging, it, we've done two things. We've said it, it is important to give. It helps our, um, our giving rates. It helps with our rankings. Um, we communicate with alumni who donate in different ways. We, we want to support them. We want to find out how they're passionate about Stockton and engage them further with the other things Donna mentioned that are equally important um, to making uh, a donation. And the other thing that we've done is we are less shy about asking. So we, you know, we're asking people to participate and be part of something um, that's important to them. We're not asking them to make a donation. I think it's important we talk about the messaging too. I think some people think that their money goes into just some lost in space fund that they don't know what exactly it can be used for. It can be very specifically directed. And so we, we're we sharing this message and we feel like this is going to be the first of many of our roadshow is what I'm calling it, um, to, to really try to communicate to the back, first of all, to faculty and staff that there are ways that alumni can directly target their money right to your program, to a faculty initiative, to um, to a building or a space, right? So so it's important that we're informed about how that money can be used um, and spent and tracked, quite frankly. Um, also to a student who needs it, which is, this is a really significant impact statement for us. Donna, did you mention you're on the scholarship selection committee? I left that off. Okay, so Donna is a member of our, our scholarship selection committee. Last year, the foundation office gave more than a, I'm gonna say awarded, we didn't give it to, we awarded it to students who were deserving, um, more than 700 students, a million dollars to more than 700 students. And it makes a big difference. I mean, sometimes, right? It's um, and you know, those, those $25 gifts, the $50 gifts, the 
the hundred dollar gifts, they they make a big difference. We um, we started a senior giving campaign that we're especially proud of. Um, we had 247 seniors last year who made gifts of twenty five dollars. That was just over five thousand one hundred dollars. And so now they're like in our donor pipeline. We get to recognize them as donors, and and we hope they continue you know their philanthropic journey with um, Stockton. But those those impact. Um, statements, we really try to share them because it's important to our students. Sometimes those scholarships are the difference between staying here for the semester or not. And I recognize a lot of your names and a lot of you write scholarship recommendation letters. I know that because we read them all. Believe me, we read them all. So I think um, you know that you're helping a student by writing that scholarship letter and then we do everything we can. To, and really, the people that don't get the scholarships are just either incomplete applications or um, they've been awarded a lot of money on the front end, and the scholarship committee tries to really share the wealth is what we really, really want to do. So that's, it's kind of like a balance. Um, so there are a million ways to give. We do have a planned giving program um, at Stockton as well. We have events, and so where to give. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to wait for the gala, or you don't have to wait for the golf tournament. Um, there's all kinds of, you know, where you can give, there's something called Osprey's Gift. Do you want to talk a little bit about this event? Osprey's Gift. How many are familiar with Osprey's Gift? Oh, almost everyone here. Oh. Online, everybody familiar with Osprey's Gift? I, I can't see. For the most okay. part. <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, so Osprey's Give is 24 hours um, of giving for Stockton. So this year it is October 8th and 9th. And um, it it really is, um, it's where we onboard the most new donors. Um, it's where we raise the vil- visibility um, of where our gifts go and how they help um, our students, our programs, our faculty. Our facilities. Um, we work with the deans year round to identify giving priorities in each of the schools. Um, we also work with our partners in student affairs to identify areas of program support there as well. And it's a it's participation. We're looking for as much participation as we can get over that 24 hours. It's very slashy. And there's some fun competitive mm-hmm. edges. Like if you want to say, uh, you know, like. I'll match up to a certain amount and then put put it out into your orbits, your community, your network, your alumni base, your school, your students, your faculty. You can you can create a fun competitive matches and challenges, matches and challenges, yeah, things like that. When it comes to comes to that, and again, targeted. So if they're they think they're just sending out enough money, but you're targeting it for something specific, your program. Um, your faculty initiative, a scholarship that that sits in your for your major, you can do all that um, as well. <clears throat> I have a note here. You already did it. It says plug letters of recommendations from faculty. <laughs> Those are so great about that. Thank you. They they really do make a difference. They mean a lot. They're very important. Especially when people are asking you at the 11th hour, right? Yes. Yeah. All, all right. So any questions about this real quick as we move on? I think everyone knows the financial give, right? So we're going to, we're going to keep this moving along. Um, the next thing I think I'd love to stress is the fact that, um, you know, our alumni can be really, really helpful for our existing students in a networking, in a networking way. So I don't know how many of you guys kind of pull um, alumni in, we've got the Career Center here, so we know that, you know, alums that uh, have moved their way up the ranks or own and operate a company or have been entrepreneurs or fill in the blank, right? Fill in the blank. Have uh, gone to grad school and uh, fill in the blank, whatever they've done. You probably have students that need that kind of assistance, that kind of mentoring, so we can help with job placement. So many people just in the room today said internships, right? So we leverage our alumni all the time to uh, we have been the school of business. We've required internship in the school of hospitality, tourism, and event management. So every single student, every single semester, even in the summer, has to do a paid internship, um, supervised a certain amount of hours uh, with the earning four credits, right? They have to have a project at the end of the semester. So we have gotten super laser focused on what we call employers of choice. These employers that get that this is a learning experience. These employers that get that um, they know what they're learning in the classroom because they're engaged with us, these alumni employers, I should say, because they know what they're learning in our program. And so they know that they're going to get talent and feed that pipeline of talent, right? So that, so, so all of you that said internships are happy to talk a little bit more about that. But if you have alumni that you think could come back and mentor or talk about internship opportunities or talk about even their experience in an internship, you can do that. 
Um, and then you want to talk a little bit about the network as far as. Yep. So a couple different things. Osprey Connect is our online alumni networking platform. We have a mentorship um, platform within, and there are also groups. I know Dr. Sweet, we've worked together to set up a group for the EDD alumni. Doug, I took note of your name because I'm working with a new hire um, in social work. His name's Jeff to reach out to alumni to help with placement, I think, for the social work. Plus, excuse me, but also our accredited program. Yes. And every uh, seven years, they change their accreditation standards. Okay. One of the new standards is really pushing us to be able to do um, assessment not only on our current students to assess if they're achieving the competencies they're laid out, mm -hmm. but also you know, right. alumni. Right. So yeah, it's correct. Right. Five years out to see where they're at and how they feel about their experience and what they've learned and how they're they're using that learning. Uh, you know, in their careers. Yeah, that's so true. We need to make more connections with those social work. Uh, well, I'm going to help you do it. Thank How about that? Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, oh, good. That's yeah. what I wrote yourself. Yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. And we work really closely, like you said, with career education and development on that alumni uh, corner decompression zone. But um, I, I encourage all of you to check out Osprey Connect. It's ospreyconnect.com. You can go on. You'll be a pending user. We'll approve you. You can kind of look around in there and you can search alumni by field. So, you know, take a look and see if there are folks in there who have indicated they're willing to help and be a mentor, um, come speak in your classrooms. There are lots of different ways that they indicate they are willing to help. Um, we also have an alumni business directory on Osprey Connect. We have 85, just over 85 um, alumni who have signed up who either own their businesses or are um, a significant decision maker in the business. Um, we had their first networking event. It was on the 15th of August. Um, and moving forward in the fall, we're working on coordinating um, industry-specific hiring events. I know Career Education and Development Art does that for our students in a really significant way, and we're interested in doing it for alumni as well. Could you tell me what that link was again? Osprey, yep, ospreyconnect.com. I think when you're out and about or networking with our alumni, many, because I'm, I'm out and about a lot, don't know that exists. So I kind of keep that link on a, um, in a note on my phone. And if I meet an alumni out, I just go grab that link and then text them and just say, do me a favor. Why don't you, why don't you connect with or the other link on our on the alumni website is just I always ask alum, are you in touch with Stockton? Do you get our newsletter? Do you engage with the event? And then they say, Oh no, I moved four times or I, I moved in out and back. I that link I also keep. There's an update your contact information link right on the um, Stockton alumni website as well. So I keep those two links when I'm out and about networking. I just shoot them that link. Sometimes I'll throw it on my Facebook page, whatever the case may be, if I'm out and about. But we want alumni to populate that as well, but we want all of you engaged as well. So if you can think of, a, of ways to we, where we can kind of beat this drum and let people know to engage on um, here, we love, we would love that as well. Yep. And if anyone ever says they don't know, like, are, do you hear from our alumni office? I'm not sure. That means no. <laughs> yeah, I do not, because we email them once a week. <laughs> yeah, they do. So, yeah. So it's a, it, we try not to do it too much. But I know? have found that it goes yeah. to spam or that it's an. Or, you know, sometimes right? yeah, or they, sometimes. you have a bad email address mm -hmm. or they submitted something wrong. So, yeah, it's just all about that network. Yeah. I popped it really fast. Please. I wanted to speak on something about the open doors to professional opportunities. Just this morning in the huddle, so Sarah Biscuit, I um, will talk about SWLC and the right? Independent <laughs> <laughs> And um, Zach, you know, you talked about his fiance had been a mentor too, who's now a Stockton alumni. Um, so his fiance works in animal medicine and the mentor worked in human medicine. Um, and so she helped get her the job and the relationship kind of like, you know, pilfered out. But now their two hospitals are uh, joining forces for the like therapy pet program. Um, and so the now alumni went to the animal hospital and I was like, oh my God, you guys know such and such. And she was like, they were like oh my God, she's my boss. She was like, oh my God, she was so in, she was my mentor in the center third and she opened the door for opportunity. Um, so it just speaks to like the whole, yeah, networking opportunities. And all of it. Those connections matter. Yeah. Yeah. They do matter. They make a big, big difference. I think I, I think I have SWLC, which is Stockton's Women Leadership Council. I think I have that. This was born out of the foundation office. Johanna Johnson was the foundation chair at the time. She realized that women donate and think about philanthropy different than men do, right? And that's just data and statistics. So she brought that to the foundation and asked if we would be willing to spin off 
um, SWLC to have a women only. So SWLC is a mentoring program for women. We, we do a call for applications every single year. We do it through the deans. The deans send it out and see if there's students at Stockton that want to be involved with SWLC get, getting mentored. Then we have a pool of dynamic pool of women. Some faculty, um, faculty and staff, but also some industry folks, alumni for sure, that do this mentoring program for a full year with our students. We do professional development events, and we do have a philanthropic arm where we try to raise funds. So that whole opportunity where there's a pipeline for students to get mentored with people in our industry and then go into that field. So health sciences, sure, hospitality, sure, We've got some computer science information systems. I could rattle off a night. We started in 2018. Got a chiropractor in there. Yeah. yeah. So it's very high impact, which also reminds me um, to let everyone know that we are moving away in advancement. We're moving away from these large, really large scale events to smaller, more targeted events where we can have higher levels of engagement and manageable follow up afterwards. So, you know. Think small, high impact things like yeah. SWLC. And think about all of your mm -hmm. own programs or how that can work in your orbits because that's what um, Sarah's going to yeah. do and I'm going to help her do yes. because it's an academic year, right? All right, so we're going to keep it moving. So, career education and development. Hello. If the folks in the room, thank you. Um, I think, you know, maybe you don't know, I don't want to assume that anybody knows that there is an arm or a long to engage with career education and development, and they do a ton of work. Um, in that particular area where they build these bridges with alum uh, to help students find careers, research careers, mentor them in careers, whatever the case may be. I'll happily, you know, yield to Dana if you want to say a thing or two uh, about this, but I, I, I think I covered it, most of it on the slide. Yeah, uh, no, you did a great job, and um, you know, our office is always happy to partner with alumni. Um, I know I'm personally working on a lot of exciting events this fall and um, getting alumni back on campus to share their professional stories, um, you know, hopefully help students light bulb go off and, and recognize themselves in one of those spaces as well. So all of the things on there is a starting place for conversations with our office and how we can all work together to bring alumni um, on campus or to engage with students virtually. So maybe many of you are doing this already, bringing alumni into your classrooms, but we have an annual every spring alumni panel for our students, where we do a full program event with an alumni panel, uh, which career education development always helps us with. At the career fair, we have started these, um, tell me what the name of it is, these um, the decompression the, the alumni corner, right? Alumni corner and yeah. decompression zone. Yes, doesn't resonate with me. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a significant space where the students can come and practice their pitch. So you know we've developed worksheets that are kind of like a little checklist. Did you do this? Did you do this? Did you think about this? I mean, honestly, do you need a mirror and like a little blot? You can have that. We have vitamins, yeah. you know. I mean, we tried to think of, of everything. Um, and we have alumni volunteers at High Tops there where they can practice their pitch. So, you know, you can go up to Aisha Lee and yeah. practice it, and she can say, Oh, you need help here. Right. <laughs> the alumni are all badged. So, so they're badged at the career fair if they're if they're representing a company at their table, they're all badged stock and alum. So we I actually create a scavenger hunt for our students where they have to try to target as many any hospitality um, event management alum as possible so they can start to build their network because we're building LinkedIn in the course. So they should be leaving the career fair, you know, kind of armed and ready with these new contacts and things like that. Um, I want to say one other thing about um, alumni in the classroom to speak about. I know we work with Dana closely to identify alumni. We've worked with you before. Many faculty um, bring alumni back to the classroom. And if you need help with that, we'd love to help you. Like you have two panelists, you wish you had four. Um, and then the flip side of that is when you are bringing alumni back to campus, we'd love to know because we'd love to give them a gift. We'd love to come by and say, hi, thanks for being here. And then we even want to code them in our database as volunteers because our volunteers um, are invited to special events that other folks aren't. We have a thanks a brunch. Um, volunteer brunch during the university weekend every year. Um, other things, uh, you know, like special invitations to the air show, which sadly didn't happen this year, um, or the Constitution Day reception. So they do receive invitations to special things. Um, but if we don't know about them, we aren't stewarding them properly. So we want to make sure we know when they're here. Sure. Mm -hmm. we'll just reach out, even let her know, shoot her an email. We bring um, presents. Yeah, yeah. they bring the gifts. <laughs> 
they have a lot of money, which we don't. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's always helpful as well. Uh, not oh, a ton, but a little. Yeah, okay. Sorry. But some alumni swag would be good. And it's yeah. nice for them to get recognized and get a gift. And then they're rep in Stockton out on the town. Exactly. So we like that too. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the right hand side, honestly, is if, if you have, I'm sure you've all had an alumni call you in a career change and a move back to town, whatever the case may be, what, you know, how, and they turn back to their university for assistance. That's a service that we provide as well. So there is some um, assistance with alumni if they kind of come back and want to retool or change or reconnect with someone as well. So it's not only how we can use alumni, but how we can also help them as well. Questions? Anything about career education and development before we move on? Did we miss anything, Dan? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I think the other thing um, a strong alumni base does is, is help Stockton with our reputation and certainly our rankings, right? So um, we love to find alumni that are high achieving and be able to kind of brag about that and put them in the spotlight, and that certainly helps Stockton as well. Um, and we have a number of ways in which you can do that, right? So we talked about Oscar Connect a little bit, but we have a young alumni club. Uh, there's a way for alumni to communicate or at least give an update about what they're doing. Um, you can, and this is the link that I, that I keep in my phone. And they say, if I say, have you heard from Stockton? Are you connected with us? And they say, uh, I don't think so. Then here's a way to do that, right? And um, and the alumni office always calls me and say, were you at an event last night or something? Because we have like four new... Uh, our, in, our inbox is flooded. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I wouldn't say flooded, but you know what I mean. Just, enough, just a little bit of a nudge. So I think um, you probably, I know you all know alumni that are doing great things, right? In uh, some way, shape, or form. The, uh, we want to know. We want to know what they're doing, where they're doing, and, and how we can highlight that, acknowledge that, and um, build them into the fold. Right. So this is one of my favorite slides. I like them all. But this is one of my favorites because I get to talk about people who are amazing and doing really fun things. Um, for those of you who were at commencements in the spring, our commencement speaker, Dave Schaller, right? That is the first time that we have we took a different approach. It wasn't, and, you know, government officials are terrific, right? Mm -hmm. uh, people who uh, make really important decisions for our state, but we have Stockton alum as our commencement speaker. That has never happened before. And he told such a great story. So he is a graduate of 2006. He's a young man. He is the VP of communications for the 76ers, and he was our commencement speaker. Um, um, we have um, Ed Marshall on our Foundation Board of director, uh, Directors, who works at UPenn. Juanette Vassar-McNeil, who is the president of the Cape May County NAACP. Jose Lozano, also a young man, class of 2003, senior vice president, um, strategic business partnerships at Hackensack Meridian. He's on our board of trustees. Um, this one's really great. Jessica Ramirez, class of 98, was a first-gen student. who is now, She's an attorney and now an assemblywoman for New Jersey's 32nd Legislative District, right? One of our first to fly. Mark Giantonio has been a longtime partner of us. Um, he's a uh, casino industry president, inauguration class rep. Shelly Yak is the director of the Tech Center, which is you know right in our backyard. Lori Herndon, president and CEO of Atlantic Care until she recently retired. Um, these are really terrific success stories, and they um, they resonate with our students. You want to know who they really resonate with? Their parents, right? <laughs> Their parents really, really want to help uh, or really want to hear those success stories, and it helps with recruiting. So um, we ask those folks to come back and speak at events like Instant Decision Day, and all of those folks have already opted in. They've raised their hand, and they're doing things for us. So if you want them to speak in your classrooms, yeah, that is an option for you, you know, and like, like Donna said, I know there are other alumni that you're working with and we'd love to know more about them so we can reach out and ask them to do these things too. And, and they might want to be involved in other ways. So you said they sit on uh, board of, the board of trustees. Yeah. We have a foundation board, which we would highly love. Um, alumni that are interested alumni to come sit on. Mm -hmm. We have two big fundraiser events a year, the golf and the gala. We have event committees for both of those as we gear up for those events. Uh, are there alum that you know that might want to sit on those committees and contribute? Maybe they come and golf every year, but maybe, you know, there's like an eight week lead up to these things that, um, that help us build um, attendance and um, donors and things like that. We would love to have alum engaged in that as well. Anything else about that? Questions about that? Reputations and ranking? That was a fun slide. Yeah. This one's fun too. <laughs> so um, 
all on this line, we'd love to be, you know, there's a lot of community engagement. There's a lot of things we like to involve alumni in that helps back with reputations and ranking as well. But, you know, they're, they're out there kind of flying the Stockton flag. If we can bring them into the fold, cultivate them, keep them, get them to read their emails and the newsletters and keep them uh, updated on what's going on in our, in our community. You know, we all work here. You know how busy and crazy this place is, right? Right. And so there's so much going on, but something might resonate with someone, an alum in your orbit that one wants to know what's going on. So there's all kinds of programs, uh, community events, things happening in the workplace, nonprofits, business, all these things. So like when we had the presidential inauguration, we had an alumni representative from each year that Stockton's been open to represent that year's class in the entire inauguration processional. Um, and they had a reception for them. So it was like a mini reunion for all these folks. They were so happy to be asked to. So, and I know many of you worked on that event, you know, and they, they were part of the processional and they had the best time. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, they, many of them knew each other. It was, uh, it was great. It was a wonderful way for us to say thank you to our alumni. Please come back and be part of something important. It was exactly. And, and, and it really spurred, um, um, the desire to do more, you know, they have, was strong. Um, yeah, yeah. They really <laughs> yes. wanted, what's the next thing? What, what can we be, you know, what's what event um, are we going to, where can we all participate? They were looking forward to getting together. Well, and yeah. especially the classes, you know, the, the further we get, you know, from the seventies and eighties and the nineties, right. Uh, things are different here now, and there's a lot to be proud of. And for a lot of these folks, uh, you know, the, the value of their degree has increased and they are blown away. There were some people who hadn't been here in 20 years and they couldn't believe what it's right. like. Yes, true, true. So that was neat. Um, well, when you talk about just the classes, right? Lots of people don't always resonate. And I don't know if it's the same for you with the, your actual year that you graduated, but maybe it was your program or maybe you were an athlete, or maybe you were in a sorority or a fraternity, right? So we call those affinity groups. So we're trying to hyper-focus and target these affinity groups because lots of times that's what resonates with um, with an alum. Maybe it, maybe it isn't their program or maybe they changed their major or whatever, but they really, really had an experience in one of those other um, areas. So think about that when you're out and about talking to an alum or think about that if you want to build small networks or organizations or clubs around these affinity groups where we can um, talk about stocked in, in that way. Yes. And the point person for our affinity groups happens to be in the front row. I get to leave. That's great. <laughs> and she's not even a plant. So yes. <laughs> thank you. Um, and, and so then what ends up happening is like, there's a whole group of people that sit on the golf, um, the golf committee. There's a whole group of people that sit on the gala committee and they become this kind of network of alums and they're from classes across the board. Right. So, so they're doing the good work for Stockton as well. How many of you are aware that we had a um, summer show house as an advancement? Bell as a one, two, three, handful of folks. Okay. So uh, we did something very different this year. We, we have an alum that has a, a beautiful home that offered their home as a fundraiser, a tour of their fundraiser. They happen to own a business that is um uh, a furniture decorating company and interior design. So okay. it is Surfside Casual Furniture and Seven Mile Design are their businesses. And the entire home um, was filled with items that you could buy in their store and decorate it by their designers at Seven Mile Design. So you bought a ticket to walk through the house. You could stay as long as you wanted. There was a VIP reception. The ticket was a little bit more expensive. It was a party. Um, and all of the proceeds... 100% uh, of the proceeds they offered to donate right to the foundation. Right to the Stockton's Foundation. So it it was, uh, it is, I should say, I would say our most unique community partnership. So when this show house first started, I was like, what is that? Uh, How's yes. that going to work? Yeah. Kind of thing. And it's funny because um, our, our donors and our friends were interested. They sold tickets at the furniture store. And so those folks were interested. But it also turns out New Jersey Design Magazine um, had an ad. And people do this for fun. They go around and look at different show houses. I mean, it's a high it is something that, that people do. Um, we had one lady visit the house from North Jersey who had been to show houses as far as Atlanta because that is her okay, hobby. Like right. Um, that's my most extreme case, but it happens. <laughs> with ideas yeah. like that, like I would just say that every one of us could help with an idea like that. Is there a place in your orbit, right, that would be um, 
people that would be useful. And I don't mean in a show house way, but maybe, you know, maybe we have an alum that works at a, at a park or a zoo or a nonprofit or a, an amazing historic uh, play, place, right? So I, I think about these things all the time about how we could leverage that for, for Stockton and the alum um, and, and the community mm -hmm. all of the time. Um, so, I want to pop back to regional events yeah. um, quickly because a lot of people ask us about regional events because we are um, so densely populated, you know, our students and alumni here in New Jersey. But what we have been doing, um, we have been doing it and we're doing more of it, is traveling. Well, we're, when the president um, is traveling for professional development or conferences, we're looking to see if we have pockets of alumni in those areas and then hosting events, like trying to find a spot that will host us and having an event there. So recently we did one in Washington, D.C. We have the Washington Internship Program, so there's a significant number of alumni there. We were able to hold it at the Washington Center. Um, but we did one in Seattle, too. Um, and it's interesting. We have 153 alumni who were in that area. <laughs> and we, we pulled the list and we looked at it. And the percentage of them who had already made a donation was more than 20%, mm -hmm. um, which is much higher than our percentage of alumni giving across the board. And so we hosted a small dinner event there with the president um, and some other um, administrators who were there for a conference. So if you are traveling for professional development and you are interested in having dinner with alumni, let us know. And we can look at that list for you, like who's there and if you have a free night, you might, it might be something that you want to do. Um, we're looking at Florida right now for the spring. We have 2,200 alumni there. I was shocked by that. Uh, more all the time. So um, people, people are moving to Florida. They're retiring and moving there. Um, so we're looking at doing uh, three to five events there within a week. Um, but we're checking out where they live now. So, so. thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Ideas? Travel in your future? You can maybe take back that off as of the study quarters. Absolutely. I don't know about international, but if there's anything. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. Yeah, the yeah. kind of ideas we want. That's great. Uh, we talked about SWLC. I can talk about that more morning, noon, and night. Just talk, just reach out if you want more information about that. Especially if you want to be engaged and involved, you can totally uh, join us as well. Do you want to talk a little bit about the community food? Sure. sure. Yeah, it's just an example um, of another um, partnership uh, in the community. So we have second Saturdays in Atlantic City where we try to highlight things that are happening on our Atlantic City campus and just the physical space itself. Um, Community Food Bank of South Jersey donates to our student food pantry now. Uh, they were looking to do a volunteer kind of drive here. They wanted to come here and try to get volunteers. And we said, well, well, we try to get volunteers to do things for us, actually, like not other people. <laughs> However, <laughs> we could do a food drive, which they're calling it a dorm kit. Um, and folks are going to make donations and assemble the kits for our students. And they're going to have a volunteer table there, too. So our volunteers are working the event, um, student volunteers as well. And they can also recruit volunteers while they're there. But it's just another example when they said, hey, can we come and recruit volunteers? <laughs> It's turned into something a little bit more valuable for both of us. So we did. No, yeah. for the faculty in the room and yeah. on the call, I mean, on Zoom, I mean, we all have this kind of um, service obligation as part of our as part of our work requirements, mm -hmm. but even though it's it comes natural for most of us, but think about engaging with alumni that counts as some kind of service that we, we do um, in any, in any way, shape or form. The MLK day of service, I think, you know, obviously everyone in this room is very familiar with that, but that's a big pull from alumni that want to, uh, that are in the community that um, work in some of these um, nonprofits in this community that, uh, uh, that let us partner and engage with, with all of those events too. I think there's like, 200, how many, I don't know. A lot. I know there's a lot of businesses that <laughs> yes. yes. partner with the MLK Day of Service. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a big number. And lots of money. Good mm -hmm. questions about community engagement, ideas, thoughts going through your head. Want to hear them all? Um, so the other, uh, one of the other great things about a strong alumni base is building this, um, you know, this history that we have. And as far as colleges and universities go, we're, we're relatively young, right, in the scope of things. But it's important that we kind of uh, keep the history, and there's a lot of history at Stockton. And the great thing is there's still alum that um, love to keep this memory and tradition alive. So you might not be thinking of your students today, but 
they're they're doing things today that will be memorable. They're doing things today that are going to leave an impact. Um, and so we want to try to we want to try to manage that. We want to try to me- remember that in a meaningful way and keep that part of the alumni pipeline as well. Yep, establishing traditions for a young school, right? That's different. We're young, um, but we now have graduates that have reached that 50 year anniversary mark. So again, for those of you who are who were at commencement in the spring, um, you may have noticed the 10 uh, members of the class of 1974 who led out the class of 2024. How cool, right? Um, And there was one gentleman there who graduated in the winter of 1974. He was one of two people and they took him to dinner at Smithville Elm. There was no ceremony for him. And so he walked across the stage for the first time um, in like, I got goosebumps. I was getting all teared up. Um, It was really terrific. So we are, we've established this tradition moving forward. The class of 1975 has been invited to walk as part of commencement, but we wanted to identify other um, signature events for them that made sense. Stockton myths and legends make sense, right? So um, Stockton, I'm working with Eddie. It's been really terrific. Um, he said that Stockton myths and legends has had the same panel members for many, many years. Yes, um, volunteers and of course, um, they're, they're right. They're and passionate we, about the history and we want to keep them because they're amazing. Yes. But we want to reach out to others too. So this gives us an opportunity to do so. So this year is part of university weekend, the classes of 72, which there are 12 of them, interestingly enough, through 75 um, will be invited to come to Stockton Myths and Legends and come to a dinner um, reception afterwards to interact with one another, get to know each other, um, opt in for a planning committee to help with the activities in the spring. So they're also going to serve as ambassadors. Some of them have already raised their hand um, for our new plan giving program, which just makes good sense at this time in the history of the institution. So um, another thing that we haven't talked about, but I'm just going to give it a quick shout right now, alumni ambassadors, we use them for everything. If you guys are working with alumni, um, we send out emails, we do things on social media. It would look like it's coming from Aisha as our alumni champion, just using you as an example. We do all the work. It really comes from us. But if the message comes from an alum, it has more impact. So coming from me, it's like, oh, that lady in alumni relations, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Coming from your fellow alum, it really means more. So if you are working with folks, it's a nice way and it takes, it's almost no effort whatsoever. We'd love to put your name and your face on an invitation to our alumni. So send those our way. Definitely so. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, or something else. Oh, we do we talk about golden ospreys? Just that great that's, that's, yep, that's, that's what that we're group. calling them our golden ospreys. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. Yeah. If you have never been to Stockton Smiths and Legends and you have never encouraged your students to go to Stockton Smith and Legends, and I do think there's recordings of it somewhere, but it's worth it to go to the live event. Uh, you will learn more than you will be so surprised about all, a lot of the history at Stockton, but in a, in a great way. In a, in a, um, I think it's magical. It's, it is. I magical. really do. It's, it's so way. unique and special, and I don't know. It's one of the. It's just. It's one of the things that makes Stockton a special place. But I can't do a better job of words than that. I'm yeah, sorry, but you know, no, it's true. And, <laughs> and I think the more people that engage in that, and the more students, I think it would help culturally, right? If you teach work behavior and organizational culture, like we do in the school of business, I think it's important that you know the students know the history. Um, and uh, we've really done a great job. I, I walk down the hallways of the school of business and we have pictures of our alums in their workplace or at on campus. And I think that helps students connect and resonate and be like, oh, who is that? Or, um, oh, that I could be me. <laughs> that could be me. I'm yeah. going to get on the wall, right? Exactly. Um, but that's, I think that we do a good job trying to showcase the institutional history and the culture that we have here. There's nothing like going and hearing it from, from the horse's mouth for sure. Um, and commencement in spring, we're good. With, with, yeah, yeah. Yes, yep, yep, they're going to walk again. Yep. Questions about institutional memory and tradition as we get toward the end. Yeah. So advocacy and support, right? They can obviously, um, if there's uh, alumni in all kinds of places, depending on their job, their position, um, what their um, stance is on things, you, we can leverage them um, in different ways to represent Stockton or speak on behalf of any initiative that might be going on at the university or in the state, quite frankly. Um, I think, again, to uh, Sarah's point about sometimes when the message comes from the alumni and not from somebody 
at Stockton, right? Um, like I'm not a Stockton alum. I, I, I'm most school spirit for sure, but I'm not a Stockton alum. Sometimes when they, when, you know, when I have someone sitting here saying, I sat in that chair, you know, I, I took that class. I understand the, the G, the general studies curriculum. Um, like they speak that same language. I think there's just um, a real connection that um, alumni can make when they have sat in, sat in those, um, in those seats for sure. Well, and faculty, real connections with faculty too. So, and Aisha and I have said this many times, once folks get to know us in the alumni office, most of the time they like us, but Aisha and I aren't who they're coming back to see, right? They're coming back to see the faculty in the room. They're coming back to see the staff who help them along the way. So the relationships that you have um, are important and um I, we can make them stronger. I, I didn't. I didn't know that not every school at the university had an advisory board. I just assumed that every school at the university had an advisory board because the school of business. And you know how we live in these silos here sometimes, right? So why wouldn't you have an industry advisory board for whatever it is you're teaching, whatever your discipline is, whatever your major is? Why wouldn't you have a group of people once a year? come back and, and look at your curriculum and talk about where your students are getting jobs and give you information about skill sets and, um, and industry trends. And I, I, why, why, right? Why wouldn't you? So, right. so, and I'm sure there's really good reasons why, right? Like, I don't know, but maybe, but think about building an alumni advisory board or just an advisory board period, but having alumni contribute to that. Um, in a meaningful way is so helpful to the progress of your program and just insight. I mean, some uh, alumni, I mean, some faculty stay very engaged in their disciplines, but if we're out like me a long, a long time, um, you know, you want to get a pulse on what's going on in the industry. So, so they can really be super supportive. And if you don't want to have a formal advisory board, just have a focus group, right? Just bring a group of people back um, and, and tap their uh, institutional knowledge and their and their workplace knowledge in whatever field that you might be in. So that's another really great way to stay connected to alumni. And boy, they have a lot of thoughts and advice and opinions. Be, be prepared to hear the good, yeah. bad, good, bad, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And in a year when you didn't initiate that and they haven't seen like your plan because they told you to do that a year ago, yeah. be prepared for that too. So um, yeah, it, it is a manageable lift though. We just did it with um, Dean Ian Marshall in Argue. So there wasn't just uh, within the last year. Okay. Just yeah, I mean he's been here two years. So yes, within the last year, and they are they are up and running, and they're a great group. And they were honored to have been asked and thrilled to participate. So I, it's a win for the school. Um, it's a win for the academic school. It's a win for everybody. It is. So mm -hmm. tap tap the resources mm -hmm. for sure. We've talked about alumni class participation. We've talked about job placement and internships, but we can talk about it more if you want. And something interesting that just happens to be on our radar right now, super fresh, is that uh, we have um, a position here at the University of Government Relations. We actually have somebody in that works for Stockton in government relations, and we have this giant convention that comes to Atlantic City every year called the League of Municipalities. So there's over 600 municipalities, if you don't know that, in the state of New Jersey. So they all convene, all of the municipalities, so all of these government officials convene in Atlantic City every November. Um, and so if you're doing something in your program, so we are hosting an event at the Stockton Atlantic City campus for these we call them leaguers, right? Because I come from the industry side of it, right? Um, we, we're hosting this event to have them come over to the Stockton campus, but um, I happen to teach a wine fundamentals class. We're going to have a reception. We're going to get New Jersey um, wineries to uh, represent and be in front of these folks that are um, policymakers and municipality leaders and governors, and I mean, not governors, but uh, mayors and mm -hmm. town um so, so there's ways maybe that what you're doing in your program could connect with some initiatives that the university is doing that we're not building those bridges well, right? So but think about some of those things too, whatever your disciplines are. And I swear uh, we're done, I think. We have some <laughs> for feedback and improvement. Do I have one more? Okay, I'm sorry. For feedback and improvement. So I already told you there, it wants you to engage your alumni. They're not going to be shy about communicating with you about um, anything, any initiative that you might be doing curriculum-wise, program-wise, engaging alumni-wise, uh, the university, uh, you know, Food, anything. They'll, 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 they'll talk to you about it. Food is big, actually. Uh -huh. you, you'd be surprised. Food no, I mean, no, that's why I said it. It's yeah. super big. It's the things that, that they engage in. 
Well, and we, um, the alumni office um, administered um, a comprehensive alumni survey for the first time last year. So we asked everyone, we had 1,200 people reply. Um, they, they took 15 minutes to share their opinion with us. Um, and we listened and we have um, developed programming to, and we're gonna continue to um, develop programming that is responding to what they've asked for. But the top four things they said they wanted enhanced benefits and services. Um, so we've introduced discounts on the alumni business directory and free estate planning services through our partnership with Free Will. They asked for more mentor and networking opportunities. Um, so we have created a survey that we've just distributed, I think, on Thursday of last week <laughs> um, to ask them what sort of uh, mentor and networking opportunities they'd like. They want to hear more increased alumni highlights. Everyone, this is a great opportunity to give shout outs to your alumni. So we're sharing what you would consider like class notes regularly on um, social media and in our newsletter. And here's something super cool. They asked for up, more updates from their academic schools, right? So they want to hear about at their academic schools specifically. So we're working with the deans and we have developed um, quarterly newsletters that go out from each of the academic schools um, to respond to what they've asked for. So I know how those program meetings go and we never get to the topic of how can we engage our alumni more in our program meetings, quite frankly. I know this is being recorded, but um, yeah. But, but the point is, it, maybe we bring it up, right? Maybe us in our program meetings bring it up and say, hey, uh, you know, what can we do maybe to engage our alumni more? Because that does come from the dean. And unless you can think of better ways for that get, to get that information to trickle down and get to us um, in, in meaningful ways, um, you know, not email maybe, but anyway, that's, that's, um, we do have someone in our office, Megan Hart, associate director of alumni engagement, who is going to reach out to program directors in each of the schools to ask that question. That's more drill. Right. So it's just a little bit more specific and targeted. And if you're not, all of you are not following Stockton on all of our social platforms, right? On Facebook, on Instagram, and you'll find out, Oh, like that, when did that happen? Or where's, where's that picture being taken or whatever the case may be. It's, it's enlightening. So I would, I would encourage you if you have any social media platforms to share Stockton social media platforms, like it wouldn't be a big deal to just share something that's going on. Um, if you have a network of alumni that you communicate with a regular basis, but minimally you guys can do that yourself. And now we have some questions for you. So, um, we're just going to wrap up with Q&A unless you guys have um, additional questions for us, but we want to ask you questions like, do you use, how do you utilize alumni? Um, how can the alumni office assist after you just heard everything we were talking about? Um, let's just have some discussion if we can in the next five minutes. Thoughts? Hi. I have event services. We did like a 10 year reunion. So we had a panel. Um, it was great. <laughs> All right, but that was that was your office because you hired so many of those students. Then you had the reunion. Were you moved in on that? I know about that reunion. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yep. great. Other opportunities. What do you have to so I'm working with the visual arts program to launch a new event in the fall called the Working Artist, and it's going to be two days of professional development sessions offered each, each course module um, with full support from the faculty so they will be taking their students to one of these sessions that they can self-select into or log on to zoom and it's going to be a combination of industry professional speakers as well as alumni and i tapped into linkedin right now and i actually had two really great alumni conversations um that both of them are more than excited to come back and share their college and career stories and offer advice one is a graphic designer that's working at panasonic um, and she's gonna come back and talk about freelance careers in that space and then we have another really impressive alumni from 2019 that was marine science major with fine arts minor and she designs aquatic um displays for aquariums and educational purposes so That's she cool. uses her scientific illustrator skills to design um, 2D and then transfers into 3D and 4D. Wow. Um, really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Love it. And then we have, what? Is that Laura? 
No, it's Katie. Okay. Oh, Katie no. Like, and it's Art V, right? Visual Arts? Yes. Yeah. Is this what Brian, is, is she involved in this at all from the art gallery? She will be aligned on okay. the line yeah. there. Um, uh, but we're working with Mariana Smith and the whole faculty. That sounds really good. Yes. Awesome. And this will end in April during the Senior Art Exhibition with a night of networking for all those that are fans of creative career spaces, the love of art. So it's pulling all of the people together, um, staff, faculty, alumni, students, unit of et cetera. Thank you. I will share with you. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Thank you. And then, mm -hmm. did Nabal talk to you this morning about the etiquette stuff? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Can I share one more? Sure. Okay. okay. We're blowing out the etiquette dinner and we're reimagining it and we're going to be doing um, polish and poise, the etiquette experience, more of a reception style. And we're going to have um, six different stations that students can rotate to or self-select to, to get to three of them to learn different um, dining etiquette and networking etiquette skills. And we're going to be bringing our hospitality alumni back to um, facilitate those stations. Love so, it. So, yeah. I love it, too. in the loop with that next Super great example. Now. Is yeah. that all students? Are all students all invited? All students are invited. Okay. That is a nominal fee yep. um, to, for tickets mm -hmm. um, with a fee waiver option for those that need it. I think that's terrific. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's great stuff. I have something. Yes, please. Um, we are, we are um, well, we have alum who serve on our advisory board that we established last uh, last year, uh, and we also invite alum back to speak at in, in our classes and at different uh, events that we have. Um, what I'm wondering, and uh, I used to, I had a GA, um, as you probably know, kind of helped me set up Osprey Connect. Um, I haven't looked at what she, the work that she did this summer, but I was wondering if you um, had any ideas about how to get alum to um sign into um or or connect through osprey connect and how difficult um that is uh, because i know that a lot a lot of alum don't um but do you have any ideas about how i can approach that and um you wanting to use um osprey connect as a communication tool a full communication tool to alum um to invite them back and invite them to get engaged do you have any, have any ideas on that yeah, I do. Dr. Sweet, you you would want um, alum from the EDD program, correct? That's correct. Yeah, so I would recommend... Well, um, let, me, let me let me change that. Um, okay. Not from the EDD program, but also we're looking for Stockton alum who have master's degrees to um, uh, apply to our program. So it could be any alum. It does not necessarily have to be um, just alum uh, of our program. Um, I would, I'll change my message, just my answer just slightly then. It, there are two different things we could do. Like if it were um, just EDD and maybe some other targeted groups, I think we look at those lists and I think it's a very specific message that comes directly from you that talks about the benefits of signing up, that has a link that shows them exactly how to do it. Um, if it is something that you want to share with the masses, so our, you know, 65,000 alumni, um, 40,000 active emails, it would be something that we could put in the newsletter or put out on social media. So if, you know, our smaller, our smaller groups, we can do very specific messaging that comes right from you. Um, and for larger groups, we can include it, you know, with a menu of different engagement opportunities. Yeah, we don't mind using it as a marketing tool to yes. other other people who have not been a part of our program. That's that's one of the whole points is to reach out um, and bring our program kind of out of the shadows. Even within Stockton, I feel like our program is kind of in the shadows. So bring our program and its benefits uh, as a leadership development tool out of the shadows. And so if we can share with other Stockton alum who have not um, uh, been a part of our program, that's that's awesome. Let's um let's you and I connect about that and we'll kind of figure out a little mini marketing campaign. All right, that sounds great. Yep, thanks.
Thank you all mm -hmm. for attending. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, you know where to find both Sarah and I. Mm -hmm. And thank you all for online for jumping in as well, you guys. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thank you. Oh, yep. Thanks. Hours <laughs> <laughs> Am I shutting this off, Sarah? Or is it? No, leave it, it on. Leave it on. Let's stop the recording.